Hello everybody, you found Intunist and welcome to another Top 10 Super Smash Brothers list. Now a while back ago when I made my first ever Top 10 list, it was Top 10 Best Overall Super Smash Brothers Characters. And when I made that list, a lot of people, like, left me comments thinking and expressing and pretty much just saying that I should have made the list the top 10 most consistently good Super Smash Bros. characters throughout the series, rather than just showing the best characters from each individual game. And as promised to some of you, in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And before we start here, and I hate to pull a zero again, guys, but please, please, please just remember that this video is just my opinion. Don't get into a tizzy about it because I don't care. And with that said, let's head right into the list. Now this first one probably isn't one of the ones you necessarily expected, but Toon Link is actually one of the more consistent characters across the two games he's in in my opinion. He's just a very solid character in both Brawl and Smash 4. Which in theory I suppose makes sense, considering that the character was relatively unchanged in his transition to Smash 4. Well, unchanged at least, compared to certain other characters. Regardless, Toon Link is an absolutely solid high tier pick in both games. He has a phenomenal projectile game, and when a character has a projectile game that good, they usually aren't very mobile to negate that fact, exampled in characters such as regular Link and Robin. But Toon Link isn't like that at all. He's actually very mobile. Fucker's always jumping around and just constantly throwing one of his three projectiles at you. Honest to god, you want to know what Toon Link is like? You want to genuinely know what he's like? He's like a rabbit with diarrhea. Because much like Toon Link, a rabbit with diarrhea is constantly jumping around all hippy hoppy while simultaneously just pumping out shit at you. That's Toon Link. That's what Toon Link is. Toon Link is mobile, a good zoner, and frankly just as if not more powerful than his more realistic counterpart. With his mobility, zoning, and power being pretty much the same in both Brawl and Smash 4, Toon Link is a consistently good character. Lucario is another character who, despite being super consistent, has never really achieved top tier status. Nevertheless, he can easily be considered a consistent character, even though he's only been in two Smash games. Lucario possesses the unique attribute of Aura, which is a mechanic that makes his attacks cause more damage and knockback when he's at high percents, albeit with a cap. This of course is a double-edged sword, because despite his moves becoming much more powerful, Lucario only gains it at high percent and thus is much more susceptible to dying. However, Lucario keeps his consistency despite this double-edged sword in both games he is present in, albeit for different reasons. In Brawl, there was a mechanic called Hitstun Cancelling which was when you could air dodge or attack out of hitstun within a certain number of frames to actively cancel the hitstun your character is in. It drastically reduced the amount of hitstun a character would normally suffer through, especially at higher percents. This meant that you were able to live longer in Brawl, which heavily benefited Lucario because his moves were a lot stronger at higher percents, which put him at a slight advantage state over most of the game's other characters. This meant that you were able to live longer in Brawl, which heavily benefited Lucario because his moves were a lot stronger at higher percents, which put him at a slight advantage state over most of the game's other characters in this situation. He could just hit stun cancel out of the same moves that pretty much any character could hit stun cancel out of, but this put Lucario at an advantage because at higher percents you could live longer in Brawl, and since he did more damage at higher percentages, he was at the advantage. Until of course Meta Knight and Ice Climbers came in though. As for Smash 4, Hitstun Cancelling has been removed, thank god, but now an even more deadly mechanic has been introduced. Rage. I don't think I really need to explain this, but for those of you that don't know, Rage is a mechanic in Smash 4 that increases the knockback of all attacks the higher your percentage is, which can lead to some pretty early and frankly janky kills. So basically, it was like they gave every character aura. Now Lucario already had aura, so to balance Lucario, they definitely took away his aura, considering that Rage is already a mechanic now, right? Right? Wrong. Not only did they not take away aura, even though they basically gave aura to every character in the game, they made it stronger. And it now affects every single one of Lucario's moves, regardless if they are aura-based attacks or not. So not only did they make Lucario stronger by greatly increasing the effects of Rage, but he also hugely benefits from Rage, as he now has two factors increasing his knockback at higher percents. Meaning, he can do this. Game. Game. 
All in all though, despite all the buffs and nerfs and the changes in mechanics, Lucario has always found a way to make use of his strengths and retain his viable character status, making him a very consistent character. Zero Suit Samus You know, this character kinda makes you think a little bit. Is Nintendo trying to send us a subtle message that women are better when they wear less clothes or something? I, I don't know, it's kind of starting to seem that way, but regardless, ZSS is a very consistent character. She's not only been a viable character in the two Smash games she's in, but she has also remained a prominent character in both of them. In both games, she's good mostly for the same reasons, though. Due to moves such as her down B, side B, and tether, she has very good recovery options. These moves along with the fact that she has very high jumps lead to her having very good mobility as well. On top of her mobility, she also possesses very low lag and powerful aerials such as her up and back air, the latter of which is a very solid kill move. She also has solid spacing tools due to her Zare, able to space it out in the neutral to try and safely tack on some damage while looking for an opening. Here's the main difference between Brawl and Smash 4 ZSS though. Unlike in Smash 4, in Brawl, ZSS and Samus were not separate characters. Meaning that in competitive matches, if you wanted to choose Zero Suit Samus, you had to hold L or R on the controller, that is, if you used a GameCube controller, while selecting Samus. Some might say, well, what does that matter? What does it matter that you have to select her in a different way? Well, it actually is kind of important. The fact that they were separate characters shaped the meta a little bit, as when you play as ZSS, the match starts with her in her power suit and removing it, rather than her just spawning in a ship like she does in Smash 4 thus leaving scattered pieces of her power suit right on the ground in front of her. So ZSS at the beginning of a match can actually pick up those scattered remains of her suit, which are actually among the most powerful projectiles in the game, mind you, and throw them, leading to a huge range advantage at the beginning of a match, as she is able to potentially tack on a lot of damage very quickly while shutting down her opponent. In Smash 4, due to her being a separate character from regular Samus, this isn't an option, and she's good in this game virtually for the same reasons. She's even arguably around the same spot on the tier list based on the general consensus of her current tier placement. However, in this game, she's actually better at juggling due to the changes in her up air, and is also good at killing due to her new up B, which has incredibly high knockback and kill power, and of course, as you probably all know, combos out of her up air. Some may argue that this is a step down from her down smash infinite and brawl, but regardless of opinion, I think we can all agree that ZSS is a pretty consistent character. Ranking at number 7 is the Ice Climbers, notoriously famous for their grab bullshit in every game they're in. In Melee, they are considered a high tier character mainly due to desyncing, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, it's when you get the Ice Climbers to act separately from one another which leads to a whole plethora of different setups and tricks, including wobbling. Otherwise known as the precipice peak of bullshit mountain. <laughs> you guys uh... You guys get it? Uh, you guys, you guys get it? I, uh, I made a joke involving mountains. Get it? Because, because they climb mountains? Because they're, they're the ice climbers? No? Okay. Anyway, if you don't know what wobbling is, it's when the ice climbers pummel you in a certain fashion and, by doing so, make the grab totally inescapable. It's basically an infinite from a grab. This setup is half the reason the ice climbers are considered as good of a character as they are, as the wobble is not character specific and can be done on any character in the game. Pretty much the only reason the Ice Climbers aren't more prominent in the meta than they already are is because they do suffer from some bad matchups, losing the Fox, Marth, Samus, and losing hard to Peach and Ganondorf. Moving on to Brawl, the Ice Climbers graduated from high to top tier, securing a spot as the second best characters in the game. They didn't have the wobble anymore, but you pretty much still died every time you got grabbed, as they now possess the deadliest chain grab in the entire game. The Ice Climbers were much better in Brawl though, because unlike in Melee, there are no hard counters to Ices in Brawl. They are only soft countered by Meta Knight, Peach, and Toon Link. But Meta Knight is obviously the most prominent, because it's Brawl, and it's Brawl Meta Knight. With the Ice Climbers matchup dilemma pretty much solved, them and their wacky grab setups rose to the top of the tier list, meaning that the Ice Climbers are high and top tier in both of the games they are in, making them a very consistent character. Holy shit, the grammar. Yet another character who's only been in two Smash games. Well, three if you count PM. And I believe Diddy was a top tier there too, but anyway, Diddy is another very consistent character, being not only viable, but a top tier in every game he's in. He has excellent mobility, combos, quick attacks, good grab range, and fairly powerful throws plus combo throws. And to top it off, he has an excellent projectile game in his peanut pop gun and his two... 
His two... Oh. Oh god, I forgot about this! Alright. Okay. Alright, I'm good. I'm good. So for those of you who don't know, or have only played or seen Smash 4 for whatever reason, Diddy Kong had two bananas in Brawl instead of one. Meaning he had a big focus and advantage when it came to stage control, which gave him a fantastic ground game. And due to glide tossing, he also had an infinite involving both of the bananas. This secured Diddy a spot as a top 5 character in the game. In Smash 4, he still has an amazing ground game, but he was focused much less on zoning and a lot more on neutral. Although, this is probably because they neutered his bananas down to one banana instead of two. He, however, still retains most if not all of his good attributes from Brawl, but just with a few changes here and there. His up B is much more mobile and less linear in Smash 4, giving the player much more control of it in this game as opposed to Brawl. This means that Diddy Kong has a much less predictable, and therefore much less punishable up B. Not to mention that Smash 4's new ledge mechanics made ledge hogging impossible, which also greatly aided Diddy's recovery because you couldn't grab the ledge and have him just not be able to do it anymore. Diddy also has what is probably the best down tilt in the entire game, as it combos into itself at low percents, which can then lead into a grab, which works at most percents in general, into a forward air at mid percents, and into an up smash at kill percents. Diddy's down tilt pretty much combos into a move at almost every single percent, or at least every single realistic percent. There are actually more moves that Diddy's down tilt can combo into, but if I actually listed them all here, this video would wind up being way too long. So just know that Diddy's down tilt basically combos into something at almost every percent. Making for a very consistently good character. Alright, alright, alright. This is the first character on this list that I honestly feel like I don't have to explain why he's consistent, but seeing as how that's one of the points to make a video, obviously, I'm gonna try. So Meta Knight is definitely one of Smash Brothers' most consistently good characters. He was the first newcomer confirmed to be in Brawl when Brawl was first announced, and since that was the only thing we really had going for us at the time until Sakurai started making daily blogs about the game, we didn't know too much about him for a pretty long time. What little did we know? We of course know now that Meta Knight is the indisputable best character in the game by a huge margin. A margin so huge that the character has been in the number one spot on almost every official tier list the game has ever had, and on the current and what is more than likely going to be the final tier list for Brawl, he is in his own tier. A tier this YouTuber doesn't even really like to associate with top tier. I prefer the term god tier, because let's be honest, that's what it fucking is. Anyway, Meta Knight is the best in Brawl, frankly for too many reasons to count. In the interest of time, I'll try to sum them up as quickly as I can. His attacks are incredibly fast and had transcendent priority, he can gimp, wall of pain, and stage spike opponents ridiculously easily, his moves are also very powerful for a lightweight, possessing very strong and safe kill moves such as his up B. He can also carry opponents up vertically by comboing his up air into itself, and finishing with a neutral B to carry his opponent out of the blast zone. And that's really just a small fraction of what he could do in Brawl, but you get the point, the character was and is virtually broken. It's a meme at this point. I mean, for Christ's sakes, he's in the thumbnail of a shitty Watch Mojo video for crying out loud. In Smash 4, he was rightfully nerfed, yet still, albeit through a long and bumpy road of shifting meta and several patch changes, retains a reputation as a high tier character. He isn't copiously broken to the point of feeling physically nauseous when you look at half the stuff this character is capable of anymore, but he still has some great setups. Most notably would be juggling opponents with his up air by linking it into itself, and then finishing with his new up B, which is still the shuttle loop minus the gliding part because gliding was removed in Smash 4. The move, however, is now a deadly two-hit combo, which can lead to kills at some rather janky percents. Meta Knight is still a very mobile and quick character, and he also is still very good at edge guarding and recovering, albeit not as good as he was before, but still good. Honestly, the quote-unquote worst thing they did to him in this game was just remove all the dumb stuff he had in Brawl, like the transcendent priority on all of his attacks. He still does retain some of the stuff he had in Brawl, though, which has led Meta Knight to become a very consistently good character. The most consistent Mario character also ranks as the best Mario character in Melee, the game where competitive Smash truly began and formulated. In Melee, Peach is actually one of the best characters in the game, being universally considered top 10, and I don't know if you've noticed from the past two years of Melee with Armada basically winning everything, sees very consistent results. Although admittedly, that's pretty much just because of him. 
Peach is consistently good for a variety of reasons, but one of the biggest and probably the most apparent would be her unique ability to float in the air for a limited time. While in this state, she can execute all of her aerials, notably her down air, which is a flurry of kicks below her to produce near unpunishable pressure against ground heavy characters such as the ice climbers, with the float mechanic in itself actually being the main reason as to why Peach is considered to be the ice climbers worst matchup. One major tool she had in melee though, as opposed to the other games, would be her down smash, which has a ton of multiple semi-spike hits to it, which all do incredibly high knockback and damage. This is actually the most damaging move in all of melee, and if a player makes the sad mistake of trying to crouch cancel it, they will eat a ridiculous amount of damage, even more than they would normally take if they don't crouch cancel it. Seriously, man, I mean, look at that. Oh. Oh, oh god. Oh, I think I looked at it too much. Not again! <laughs> she also has access to one of the best projectiles in the game in her turnips, which are actually radishes, but pretty much everyone calls them turnips at this point, so sh shut up. Able to spawn them at any time she's on the ground, and upon a successful throw, she can sometimes cause lethal damage and knockback. This assists in her already amazing edge guarding game, adding to her already expansive repertoire of deep edge guards with her float, down air to nair by the ledge, and her powerful forward air. Due to float cancelling and her slew of good attacks, she has plenty of combos and kill setups, such as down air to nair as I previously mentioned, and nair into itself, just to name a few. As for Brawl, there really isn't too much to say about her in Brawl, as in that game she saw a large drop from her high melee placement and didn't really gain too much from melee besides glide tossing. However, she still retained a positive matchup against the Ice Climbers, whom had graduated to being the second best character in the game, which led Peach to have a little bit more relevancy in a game virtually dominated by its best character. In Smash 4, she has slowly but surely been on the rise, with players like Samsora, Slayers, Key, and Umeki putting in plenty of work with this character. All of that work has led people to consider Peach, who was once generally thought to be a low tier, as now generally thought to be a high tier, which has made Peach a high tier in two Smash games and a mid tier in one, leading her to become a very consistent character. The world's most popular Pokemon is no stranger to Smash, both casual and competitive. Throughout all four Smash Brothers games, Pikachu at worst has been a mid tier, and at best was tippy top tier, in Melee and Smash 64 respectively to be precise. In Smash 64, Pikachu is the undisputed best character in the game, and if you've seen my top 10 best Super Smash Bros. characters video, you should already know that I think 64 Pikachu is one of Smash's overall best characters. Smash 64 Pikachu has no losing matchups or even any even matchups in the game, meaning he beats every character at least 55-45 with an average matchup spread of 65-35 over the entire cast. He has excellent combo starters as well as just amazing combos all around, able to easily kill with his very powerful aerials and stringy combos starting as early as 0% with his up tilt that combos into itself, and then into just about any other aerial he wants. And if Pikachu winds up off stage, his chances of getting gimped by characters such as Kirby, Falcon, or Yoshi is drastically lower than all the other characters as Pikachu has the best recovery in the game by a pretty long shot due to his quick attack, which in this game actually has some invincibility frames. And this is all while being amazing at gimping himself. His lengthy recovery allows him to travel deep for edge guards. He's also fast in literally every single regard besides his falling speed, which actually is the one thing that it's usually better to be slower at. And on top of all of that, unlike every other Smash game, Pikachu has a kill throw. He's simply superior in 64 in pretty much every way. Moving on to melee, Pikachu is arguably in his worst iteration. Yet Axe has remained a top 10 player for a couple of years now, primarily using Pikachu in tournament, taking sets off of players such as Mango and even Leffen. In this game, he is still amazing at edge guarding and gimping, plus he is still very fast, with some powerful moves as well, meaning Pikachu is very good at applying pressure to his opponent. Other than that though, he's outshined by most of the characters above him, with Pikachu himself being dubbed the poor man's fox. In Brawl, he was virtually around the same spot, except now he had a little more relevance, not only due to the rise of Esam, who throughout Brawl's history established himself as the best Pika player in the world, but as Brawl's meta went on and we learned that Meta Knight was the undisputable best character, we also learned something else. It was considered by some at one point that Pikachu actually went even with Meta Knight, which would by default make Pikachu Meta Knight's worst matchup as Meta Knight did not lose to any character. It actually still says this on the Smash Wiki, although most players, and even Esam himself included, don't believe this to be true anymore. As for Smash 4, Pikachu is still around the same spot in high tier. 
He retains most of what makes him good, except now he has a true kill confirm and up throw to down B, as the cloud part of his down B is now a spike, which true combos into the hitbox on Pikachu himself during the move. So across all the Smash Brothers games, at worst, Pikachu has been a mid-tier, and at the best, he was the best character in the game, with two high-tier placements in between, making Pikachu a very consistent character. Fox McCloud This certainly should not have come as a surprise to any of you. Fox is easily not only one of Smash's best overall characters, but the most consistently good across all the games as well. He's the indisputable best character in Melee for, frankly, too many reasons to count, so I'm not even gonna bother trying. Like, like, seriously, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Like, if you wanna... If you wanna know why Fox is the best in Melee, just look up Mango or Leffen or, like, over 50% of all Melee matches or something. I don't, I don't fucking know. In 64, he's a high tier due to him possessing multiple stringy combos due to his general fast movement speed and attacks, good finishers such as his up smash, a decent recovery, and multiple techniques such as his lasers, which are actually one of the best projectiles in the game, as in this game, unlike all the other Smash games, they actually cause hit stun, which greatly aids in Fox's defensive game and his approach game. His shine isn't as amazing of a move in this game because you can't jump cancel it in this game like you can in Melee, but he can still shine spike in this game due to the move having set knockback and also having semi-spike trajectory. However, he's combo food due to his falling speed, and he's also easy to gimp with characters such as Kirby and Pikachu due to his recovery being pretty linear due to the lack of side B's in 64. In Smash 4, he for the most part lost his ability to shine spike and his lasers were heavily nerfed in pretty much every aspect, Yet Fox in this game is still a top tier. His recovery was made better not only because of the new ledge snap, you know when you grab the ledge from like another planet basically, but also because his side B was buffed, as it now does not put you into free fall, meaning he can side B and up B while off stage, no longer having to choose between the two, and also greatly increasing the length of his recovery as well. He also gained some sick lock setups, as well as a footstool setup to gimp and edge guard opponents with by fast falling his forward air off stage into a footstool. Moving on to Brawl, Fox was worse than he has ever been, being in the mid-tier for the first and only time and ranked 15th on the official tier list. In this game, he has virtually the same problems as Fox has in every Smash game that he's in, being combo food and being incredibly susceptible to juggling. However, in this game, due to multiple changes in mechanics from Melee to 64, he's also very susceptible to locks and chain grabs, as chain grabs were much more prevalent in Brawl, which can get Fox to death percentage from 0% if not just being a straight up 0 to death, some may argue, how is this any different? There are several characters in Melee that can pretty much do the same thing to Fox. They can chain grab him very effectively, but pretty much the only viable characters that can chain grab Fox like that is Fox himself, Marth, and Sheik. Not even Sheik, to be honest, because Sheik's isn't even really like a chain grab situation. It's more of a tech chase situation, so it's pretty much only Fox and Marth. In Brawl, however, there are several characters above him that can effectively chain grab, such as Falco, King Dedede, and the worst of all, the Ice Climbers. Fox is still very fast overall, but a lot of his moves in this game just aren't safe on shield anymore, and have a lot more lag, and a lot less shield stone as well, and the character also doesn't have the best of range to begin with either. He suffers the same problems in every game he's in, being very susceptible to combos, juggling, and chain grabs. But at the character's absolute worst, he was still a mid-tier which led Fox to become one of Smash's most consistently good characters. So I know what you're thinking. What? Not Fox, but he's a good character in all four Smash games. Well, that's sort of true, but by relative comparison, it isn't. Fox is a top tier in two Smash games, a high tier in one and a mid tier in another, which isn't really a bad spread at all. But like I said before, or basically said before, in the one where he's a mid-tier, you have characters like Meta Knight and Ice Climbers, who just completely blow him out of the water. Marth may be in only three Smash games as opposed to Fox being in all four, but Marth, unlike Fox, is a top-tier character in every single game he's in, which I think is equal or greater to Fox's spread in terms of viability, which is why I put Marth above Fox on this list. In Melee, Marth is pretty much universally considered a top 3 character, with a lot of top players actually considering him to be the second best character in the game above Falco, as opposed to third best below him. In Melee, he's capable of just so much. He has a great juggling and combo game, one of the best dash dances and wave dashes in the game, very long range and disjointed attacks that come out very quickly, ridiculously large grab range, and he's also fantastic at edge guarding, especially against the space animals, which is part of why Marth was nicknamed the Spacey Killer. He's no stranger to combos either, 
possessing one of the most well-known and deadliest combos in the game, the Ken combo, named after the player who discovered it. In Brawl, he has pretty much all the same attributes that make him great, with exceptionally long reach plus the timber mechanic which lets Marth deal extra damage and knockback if you hit with just the tip of his sword. He does have this mechanic in every game he's in, but in this game it's a little more prevalent if you will due to Brawl's lack of wave dashing, making avoiding good spacing with all characters just a little bit harder. Especially Marth's spacing game as he still has spectacular range and is heavily rewarded for good spacing, but now you have one less movement option to potentially avoid his attacks. He also still has attacks that are quick on startup, plus he still has a good aerial game, a good combo and juggling game, and a good edge guarding game, so like I said, he retains most of his good attributes from Brawl, plus side B isn't a useless move on stage anymore. Finally, in Smash 4, Marth has only recently risen to greatness, with players such as Mr. E, Pug West, and False putting in plenty of work with the character for quite a while now, making him very slowly turn some people's heads towards the character. But the heads became fully turned when MK Leo showed us all what Marth is truly capable of, winning Smash Factor 5, Zero Saga, Canada Cup, and even Genesis 4, albeit not entirely with the use of his main, Marth. Now I gotta say, if it hadn't been for Marth's recent uprising into the metagame of Smash 4 and had it not been for all of his buffs, he easily would not have been number one on this list and it would have been Fox instead. Hell, Marth may not even have been second. And the reasoning for this is because when Smash 4 first came out, Marth was ass. This character for a long time was generally considered to be a low tier, some even said bottom tier. He really was not good at all. And then they buffed him three times. Those buffs assisted players like Mr. E, Pug West, and Falls to get much better results when before the buffs, those results were unheard of for Marth. And then MK Leo rose to become a top player, and now Marth is a top tier in Smash 4 too making Marth a top tier in every Smash game he's in. In this game, he functions fairly similar to Brawl, with a few differences here and there. He has good mobility and disjointed range on pretty much all of his attacks, and his shield breaker now obliterates shields. Even when the move is barely charged, it can nearly break his opponent's shield just by getting tapped at it. Like, look at this! Look at this! This game is for kids! His jab is also a very good setup tool now, as it can now combo into his F-Tilt or even his F-Smash, setting up for a kill. But what Smash 4 Marth notably has more than any of his other renditions would be his Tipper. Now like I mentioned before, he has his Tipper in every game, but in Melee and Brawl, Rage wasn't a factor, and in this game, it is. Meaning the already heavily increased knockback Marth has off of a Tipper is now stacked with Rage which can lead to some ridiculously early kills off of a multitude of his moves, such as this one. Marth has remained a top tier in every Smash game despite the constant changes in attributes and game mechanics and despite all the new additions, which could have always been potentially bad matchups for Marth, meaning that Marth may just be an inherently good character by design, leading him to become a consistently good character. And there you have it, folks, the top 10 most consistently good Super Smash Bros. characters throughout the entire series. My name is Natunist. If you like this video, go ahead and let me know by leaving a like, telling me what your most consistently good Smash Bros. characters are down below in the comments, because I'm just dying to hear it. And of course, subscribing to my YouTube channel. That means the absolute world to me. Thank you all again so much for watching. My name is Natunist, and I will gladly see you next time. Take care.